Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Praise God. Uh, prayer is so important. Prayer is so very important. Wow, what a great crowd here this morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you. Great to have many of my family members here. And uh, you guys are so nice. Aw, you are. You are so nice. You have made... Uh, Jeannie and I's time here, just wonderful. It has just been a joy for the past 12 years. Um, we will always be friends. And uh, I know this is a little scary for both of us, you know, but the scriptures say that we should not walk in fear, but in faith. Amen. So we feel that this is right. I still have a piece about it, but it's like, Lord, this is a little scary. And you're feeling like Brother Ben's leaving, and this is a little scary. But we know that God has a plan for each one of us. And uh, I will continue to pray for this church. And, and this is my last official Sunday as pastor here. But I am certain that I will do other services here. I, I know that. We're not moving to Timbuktu. All right? And you still have our number. And I, I'm not going to block you. All right? All uh, right. No, so, so, you know, we're going to still be in contact. We're still going to be uh, working on Operation Christmas Child and, and things like that. So, but officially, uh, I'm stepping down as pastor today. But what a great group. And, and it's been such a joy to work with this staff. Um, man, wasn't that music great? And Levi, you and your family are joy. And Ben, I've worked with Norma and Arlene, the, the guys in the booth. You have no idea uh, what, I mean, Brian stays with me all during this message. And he goes to those, uh, those, those points and those scriptures. I just have to mention them. And so Brian needs a big pat on the back, but, but all of you do. It's been a great joy, and I will always consider you guys my friends, my buddies. Uh, maybe we can do some things together. And so uh, it's, it's sort of surreal, but I know, I, know it's, I know it's right. But it's so great to see you guys here, and um, I, know that, um, I know that God's in control. Let me just say that. God is in control. Amen. And man, look at all those goodies, you guys. Oh my goodness. You, you have always been a very generous uh, church and uh, just continue to do that because I think God has some exciting plans for Two Lakes Baptist Church in the future. Amen. All right. Before we read our text, and it's Who Are the People of God Part 2, and I think that's so appropriate because God has called me to minister to the people of God. And so we are going to look in just a moment at, at uh, Jesus' high priestly prayer. But before we do that, I thought we might have just a little bit of levity. Did you hear of the 12 reasons why a pastor decided he's no longer going to attend sporting events? You probably heard something similar to this. Well, number one, every time I went, they were having some kind of a fundraiser. Go ahead, laugh, all right? Talk about money. It's like, uh, okay. Number two, the people with whom I sat with didn't seem very friendly. All right? That doesn't apply here because you guys are a friendly church. When people come, they say, this, this is a friendly church. Number three, the seats were too hard and not comfortable. Number four, the coach never spoke to me. And I apologize. I try to speak to everybody. Number five, the referee made a decision that I didn't agree with. Uh-huh. All right. Number six, I was sitting with some hypocrites. They didn't come to watch the game. They only came because it was a social event. Okay. You can say amen to that. Okay. Um, some games went into overtime, and I was late getting home. Number eight... <laughs> Thank you. Number eight, the band played some numbers that I had never heard before. Uh, all right. Number nine, the games were scheduled when I had to do other or needed to do other things. Number 10, my parents took me to too many games when I was a kid. All right. I've actually heard that one. 
Number 11, since I read a book on sports, I feel that I know more than the coaches do, so I'm just going to stay home. <laughs> and finally, I don't want to take my children to any sporting event because I want them to choose for themselves what sport they like best. I've actually heard that one. And I said, the reason you don't take your children to church, the reason you don't go is because you don't know the truth. And once you know the truth, you want to help your children and your grandchildren to know the truth. And so if I know something, if I can teach somebody, if you know something about cars, you need to teach them about cars, okay? Because you know how they function. You know the truth about how cars operate. And so um, I guess the bottom line is if you're looking for excuses not to come to church, you can always find them, right? The devil will provide them. And I know some people cannot come because of health reasons and there's always conflicts. But I just would say this, make your church attendance prayerful. Pray about it, okay? Uh, because church is where God does great things. He meets us here and he moves in our hearts. And my heart has already been lifted up by such great worship this morning. Um, some of those great hymns. So we're going to read our text this morning. Let's go ahead and read all of it from 13 to 24, even though our main points are just going to be 18 uh, to 24 this morning. This is Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's not all of it. And then we're going to review the first four points and then the new four points that we're going to look at this morning. But now I come to you, meaning he's praying to the Father, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That means us today. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they, may, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them. That they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me. That they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Join me in a prayer. Father God, we thank you for this prayer because it helps us to understand who we are as your people, as your children, Father. It helps us to understand our mission and our glory and our future. God, I pray for this church. I pray that you would continue to bless this church. Lord, that in the future you will bring the right pastor to this church, Lord, that will carry on the ministry of Two Lakes Baptist Church. And Lord, I pray that this very day that you would speak to many here in a special way and that we would all receive a blessing, Lord, from looking at your word. Help us, guide us, lead us, Lord. And we trust in you, Lord. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for dying on the cross to save us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're gonna review the first four points and then look at points six, seven, uh, five, six, seven, and eight. Number one, remember he said in that prayer, that they may have my joy. People, we are people, the people of God are people who have the joy of Christ. Number two, we are people of a heavenly citizenship. We're in the world, but not of the world. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Number three, we are people who are kept from the power of Satan. Satan cannot touch us unless 
the Lord allows it to test us. And number four, people who are defined by God's word. This, these are our marching orders, okay? This is our constitution of, of our faith. And we abide by the revelation of God and not by the reasonings of men. The next point, we are people who have a great commission. He says in, in, in verses 18 and 19, as you have sent me into the world, get this, I also have sent them into the world. That just didn't mean the 12 back then or the 70. It means us here today. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified. That means set apart by the truth. We are people who are set apart by the truth of God. Amen? Amen. The truth of God. And we know that Jesus personified that truth because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so our great commission um, in this high priestly prayer, it was kind of a preview of the great commission, but the great commission we have in Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. This might have been given on the mountain in Galilee. We don't know. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. There is a teaching ministry of the church. And lo, or surely, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. We know in Acts 1.8, the scripture says this, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So we're to be witnesses to the Lord Jesus Christ all over the earth. And finally, Matthew 24, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. And so Jesus is not going to come back until we fulfill that great commission, until all people groups have heard. So uh, we have been set apart and we have been sent to impart the truth of God, the love of God, the salvation of God to all who will receive it. And, you know, during uh, Jesus ministry here on earth, Jesus continually confirmed the inerrancy of God's word, the accuracy of God's word, and the historicity of God's word. Because there are people today that attack this Bible. This is a supernatural Bible that has sovereignly been given to us by God himself, our creator, our maker, and our savior. Jesus many times spoke of, uh, at least of, of Noah and Jonah and Moses and Abel and Lot. And I've told you this story before, but I'm going to tell it to you again in short form. But I want, to sh I want you to know how God works with us uh, as we have the truth and we travel. For a little while, uh, as we travel around the world and, sh and share the, the gospel with other people. Uh, you know, I was with youth with a mission for a while, and I spent a half a year in Asia. and We traveled all over Asia. And I remember one village that we went to, like I say, the last time you'll hear it officially as your pastor. Uh, we, we used to carry these sound systems with us when we went into a village and we would start singing and doing all these little pantomimes and, and we would go in unannounced and pretty soon just people would gather like, what are these guys doing? And I remember traveling quite a way through this little narrow path. I was carrying one of the speakers. We had those uh, I, I kind of a little sound system that ran. It was about like that, and, and the speakers were about the same size. It ran on about 16 D-cell batteries. And so we finally got there. It was kind of a little mud, about 20 or 30 or 40 little houses kind of made of mud and thatch. And so we started doing our, our thing, and I remember it was kind of this red earth all around, kind of like Oklahoma. It was very kind of red. And finally, this group uh, came, and at that time, we all identified by wearing, you know, uh, the same outfits, so people knew who we were. And we had one guy there that could speak uh, the Hindu language, or the Hindi, and, uh, and so he preached, he preached. And at the end, 
we gave an invitation and we said, if you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you come talk to one of these people that are dressed like, you know, we were dressed. And this one young man came up to me, looked about 20, 23. His eyes were so bright. And he told me something that just amazes me. And it's still just so noteworthy. And it just speaks to me of, of that we've got to get it out there. We need to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with all the world. He said, last night, I had a dream. And it was a God dream. Sometimes you have dreams just because you ate pizza with anchovies and peppers or jalapenos. But it was a dream. When God gives you a dream, you know it's a God dream. And he said... God told me last night, people are coming to your village tomorrow to tell you the truth. He was raised a Hindu. In that area, they had Sikhs, they had Muslims. They are coming to tell you the truth. The truth is the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's only son provides eternal life. And there's no other way to God. His eyes just beamed. He received Jesus so quickly. He was so excited that he finally knew the truth. The Hindu religion is very confusing and reincarnation over thousands and millions of years and da 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 not the truth. Je this book, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, is the truth. And you don't have to go to India. I'm going to tell you one quick little thing here, and then we're going to move on rather quickly because I have to do that. I don't want to go into overtime. All right. But you don't have to go to India. The other day, I was down here on 39th and Old 66, and I was at the new on cue across from um, a Brahms. You guys know where that is? Yeah. And so I was there filling up with gas, and this, little, this guy came up to me and said, do you have jumper cables? And I said, you know, I kind of checked him out like, uh, mm, yeah, I might. I, I, I don't know. And I was filling gas. So... I saw him walking around, talking to everybody. Pretty soon he walks back by my, my truck. I'm, I'm finished filling up with gas. I said, did you find any? He goes, no. So I'm kind of like going, Lord, is this guy a scammer? Is he for real? Does he really, you know what I mean? And ladies, I don't expect you really to do this, but guys, we can do this. So I went over to his truck. He had this old white truck. It looked really beat up. It looked about 20, 25 years old. He had a homemade camper on the back made of plywood and some kind of plexiglass. He had two dogs in the cab that were looking at me and barking. And he looked pretty scraggly, you know. Uh, but I said, where, where, where are you going, man? He goes, Grants, New Mexico. He said, uh, I don't know. Anybody's been to Grants, New Mexico. So I began to talk with him and I lifted the hood and I said, yeah, I got some jumper cables. So hooked them up, hooked them up to his truck. Well, he tried to start it. It didn't start. He tried to start it about three times. It didn't start. I said, we just got to let it charge your battery up. But you know what I was able to do? I was able to share with him Jesus. And, and while we're standing there, you know, he said, you know, I've been thinking about God and things like that, but I don't know. There's so many bad things in the world. I just don't know what, if there really is a God. And, and, and so I began to explain sin and Satan and that Jesus came to deliver us from the curse of sin. And that's where there's bad things and da, 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 da. We talked for a while and, you know, he really listened. He really listened. And finally I said, you know, try your vehicle again. He tried it a big of black smoke came out about choked us he apologized for the smoke and then I said here let me give you a witnessing track I gave him a witness track I said here's twenty dollars for gas and he looked at me and he said hey man can I give you a hug I said sure so I gave him a hug there you know I think it spoke to him you don't have to go to India. I'm not, I'm not saying that to exalt myself in any way. Do you get, get that? I'm just saying we can do things like that in a very practical way right here in the United States to witness to somebody about Jesus Christ on a practical level and just, and just tell them, man. And, and before he left, I said, can I pr may I pray with you? And he said, please. And we have this wonderful prayer together. And then I took off. But I'm hoping that when I get to heaven, I'm going to see that dude. 
All right, because he, you know, he was probably in his late 20s, something like that, I guess. Um, all right, number two, uh, or number six, actually, people who are one with God. In this passage, I believe it says, it uses the word one like five times or something like that. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. Get that. As you, Father, in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory you gave me I have given them, that they may be, may be one just as we are one, I and them and you and me. I think the main thought here, of course, is that he wants us to be unified as one. The body of Christ needs to be unified. We are p people who are called to be one with God and one with one another. The oneness of the church, let me say this, does not rest upon superficial differences such as our social status, our looks, our education, our personal pre preferences, or our individual talents. Where do we get the oneness? The oneness of our church, it, it means this, that we share the same spiritual goals, that we share the unity of the Holy Spirit, we share the same doctrine of salvation, and we share a genuine concern for the well-being of one another. That's what it means. It's what it means. And so if, if you want to find a unified, unified church, you find people that are walking, seeking God, listening to the Holy Spirit. If you want to see a mess in a church, it's people that are following what they think. Well, I think this and that, and I think... Okay, that's my Oklahoma accent, by the way. Country. <laughs> But we, we, we really, we're really glad you're thinking, but let's, what does God think, okay? Let's just time out. What does God think? Have you been praying about what, God's, uh, what, 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 what God wants? Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. Sometimes we have to bear with one another in love. Husbands with wives, wives with husbands. Endearing to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The unity of the Spirit, very important, in the bond of peace. Because if you're in the unity of the Spirit, you will have peace. And so the Scripture tells us this, that you and I, as the people of God, Understand that there is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all who are redeemed through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. That's what we, there is one faith. There is one truth. There is one gospel. And we are the people of God. Number seven. People who are greatly loved by God. Have you ever had trouble, or maybe when you were growing up or as a, a young Christian, that God really loved you? You can imagine that he could love some other people, but does he really, really love you with all your imperfections, with all the things that maybe you don't even like about yourself? Do you really think that God really, he loves you? That's what the scripture says here that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world, he didn't say just the church, but we need to know that church, that the world, all people in the world, may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Wow. Listen, God the Father loves you as much as he loves Jesus Christ as much as he loved Jesus Christ. Do you believe that God loved Jesus? Yes. That same intensity and quality of love is the love with which he loves you. Wow, that's amazing. I, I remember reading that and I thought, he loves me. He really loves me. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. If you ever question God's love for you, just go back to Calvary and I truly believe that he had you personally on his mind when he suffered for those many hours upon the cross. He was thinking 
of you. We know John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He so loved, He so loved the world that He did this. And we know 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. He's our Father. He's our Father. We are in the family of God. We sing that, that we're so glad that we're in the family of God, but we are family. We are family. We're not going to do that, but we are family. We are family. Here's Ben's expanded translation of 23 of what we read. Father, I want the world to know that you have sent me into their world to eternally save them through my death upon the cross because you have loved them just as much as you have loved me. And that is the whole motive for this book. It's the whole motive of this book. It's love. It's why God created you in the first place, and you are here because he wanted you. You're not like an, uh uh-oh, where did they come from? God created you because he wanted you. And the job that we have, and, and one of the privileges I have, and a job I have, is to tell people, I want you to find God's purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life, but so does Satan. And if you're not following God's plan, guess what plan you're following? Guess whose plan? It's the devil, and he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And you can look in our society today, and so many young people and their lives are tragically being taken and ruined because they're not in God's plan. They're in the plan of the world, and the plan of the world is a death trap. Satan rules. He's, the whole world lies under his evil influence. And so when there is love within a church, there also must be forgiveness and patience and respect and humility. Then there is unity and the love of God is reflected in such a way in the people of God that unbelievers are drawn to the church, right? I remember as a kid growing up and I was in this, some of these little churches and I thought, these people are so nice and they were. They're, I especially remember you ladies, you little church ladies, I still remember them. They were so nice to me, and they, they loved me, and I, I, I will never forget uh, these mature saints, uh, these women that walked with God for decades and decades, how I looked up to them. And so, you know, ladies... Some of you grandmas, you don't know that your grandkids or the little kids in church are looking up to you, but they are. I never told them that, but I just thought, they are so nice and they love Jesus. I want to love Jesus too. And when there is not love within a church because there are divisions and strife and backbiting and quarreling among the members, the love of God is infected with carnality And unbelievers are not attracted to the church. They're driven away from the church because the love of God is not being reflected and they see only hypocrisy. Number eight, final one. We as the people of God, you as the people of God, are people with a glorious future. Wow. Levi's grandma just recently went into that glorious future. I... I am excited, actually, maybe a little weird, about dying, but I just want to do it gracefully. You know what I mean? Um, I'm excited about getting to heaven because I know that I can't get to heaven unless Jesus comes back beforehand. But I do want to stay here and make a difference for Jesus Christ as long as I can. I don't know what the future holds, but somehow I do want to influence people to come to Jesus. Uh, I, I, I know a lot about the Lord because he's revealed himself in certain ways to me, perhaps no more than he's revealed to you, but I want to share what I know. I have my own story. I went from Hollywood to the Holy Word. All right? Yeah. And so I want to share that with people. I've seen famous people. I've seen millionaires and people that seem like they had it all. 
Yeah, like Bogey and McCall, but they didn't, all right? They didn't. Inside of them, they were empty, they were searching, they were looking for truth. So we're people with a glorious future. Verse 24 says this, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me. Is that not awesome? That they may be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory which you have given me for you love me before the foundation of the world. He said, I want them to be with me. Jesus is saying, I want you to be with me. I want you to be with me. And so uh, we as the people of God have been granted a staggering privilege. We have been justified and sanctified and one day we will be glorified because we've been adopted into God's family and we have been destined to share God's glory and the fellowship of Jesus Christ and the saints and the holy angels forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Can you think about a trillion years? Can you think about a trillion times a trillion years? That's too big for me, but we will live forever if you know Jesus Christ, forever and ever, and you will not have one bad day. It's so cute that Jonah, he's in uh, pre-kindergarten, right? Pre-K, pre-K. And so we had, uh, we, we, you know, he, first time he's really kind of going all day long and all that sort of stuff. And we said, Jonah, how is school? And he's four. And he said, no bad days. <laughs> Listen, in heaven, no bad days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not one single thing. That's, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that because every day we have problems here upon this earth, right? It's, it's kind of living in this world is a, serious, a series of problem solving, problem solving, problem solving, etc., etc. But the good news is that God wa walks with us. The Lord is always with us. And whenever, when I was young, I just thought about, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. I never really thought about the day-to-day -day fellowship that God gives us and comforts us and leads us and guides us. You know, he does. And just little things and little things. We, uh, the other day I was out in the garage and I walk out in the garage and there's water coming out of the ceiling, out of this little pipe, and it shouldn't be, all right? It was the drain to our air conditioner and it was where we had one main drain that was supposed to go into our sewer system and it was, it was clogged, clogged. That's a weird word, clogged. It was clogged and so this was the overflow. So we had a problem and if you don't solve it, we had this once before and we had water coming out of the light sockets in the kitchen. That's bad. When you see water coming out of the light sockets, this is not a good day, okay? And I remember just being kind of busy and I went up to the attic and I started do 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 jiggling stuff and all of a sudden, a sudden, I don't know, I came back down and the Holy Spirit, it was a simple thing. This was not a call to go to Africa. Just clear as, as a bell, the Holy Spirit said, it's solved, it's fixed. I was like, okay, Woo! thank you. <laughs> simple, simple little thing. But God is with us, and I knew. I knew it was fixed, and it's been fixed ever since because I was able to jiggle it, and I removed that clog. It came out. Maybe God had a holy little angel, boom, like that, put his finger in that clog. So what was the passion of Christ? A lot of times we think that the passion of Christ was going to the cross. Yes and no. The cross was just a means to accomplish his passion. And the joy was, that was set before him. Jesus Christ's ultimate joyful passion was to have a, a never-ending fellowship with us amid his glory in heaven. That was his real passion. The cross was a means to redeem us so that we would be able to spend forever and ever and ever with him. And, and, and in the ages to come, he will demonstrate his kindness towards us forever. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7 
says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, that's eternity, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 3-4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope. I hope you have that living hope this morning. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. You have an incorruptible inheritance waiting for you in heaven one of these days, and it will blow your mind. You will not be able to, you can't comprehend it this side of heaven. You will not be able to comprehend it. You know, have a, Jesus said he's gone to prepare a place for us. And he said, if I go to prepare that place, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that, that where I am, there you may be also. And I remember something Keith Green said. He said, you know, if God and Jesus made all of creation in six days, rested on the seventh, and he's been working on heaven for 2,000 years, <laughs> wow, wonder what that place is going to be like. He had us, yeah. It's kind of like sometimes if we, Jeannie and I, will see something and we'll get something for the grandkids and we thought, oh, the grandkids will love this because we know them. We know that if we get a toy or something, they're going to really be excited when they see it, when they come over to our house. And you know, God the Father and Jesus, they're making that place right now. And they're going, man, Levi is going to really, really like this when he gets up here. He's going to like it so much. Teresa's going to like it so much. Or, I mean, just name your name. He is going, they are just going to just... There's just going to be in heaven when they see this. Oh, yeah, they will be. All right. Anyway, so the four points. Let's just review the four points, and then I'm going to close this morning. Man, I'm so glad, though, I know Jesus. I'm so excited about the Lord, and I just want everyone, as you do, I want them to have this hope, the hope that we do. We are people who have a great commission. Never forget that. Number six. We are people who are one with God. Number seven, people who are greatly loved by God and people with a glorious future. People with a glorious future. You know, as I step down, officially as being the pastor here, I just want to just say, you know, just stay in church and just continue to pray and support this church. Don't, don't, don't drift away. Because some of the most profound things that have ever happened to me have happened in church. And I just have a short list here. But when I was about six or seven years old, my dad was a, was a student at OBU. And he was preaching one sun, Sunday at, at uh, New Hope Baptist Church. And I heard him say, we're all sinners and we need to be saved. And God spoke to me as a small boy. I'd never really, you know, gotten the message. I'd always just been told to be quiet and be good. And, and that, that, that morning, God spoke to me in church and said, you are a sinner and you need to be saved. And then I was saved at the First Baptist Church of Oklahoma City in November of 1965. And then I was called to ministry at church on June the 27th, 1982. And I was called to short term missions in the spring of 1983 in church. And God gave me a profound vision and Jesus spoke to me in that vision on, in January of 1995. Those happened at church. I was in church when those things happened. So I would say, don't stop coming. Don't stop fellowshipping. I heard a story about a lady and she was completely deaf, profoundly deaf. But she came every Sunday morning to church. Every Sunday morning to church. And someone asked her, why are you coming? 
and she was somehow able to communicate either through writing or somehow speaking. They, they communicated to her, maybe through written means. Why do you keep coming? You can't hear anything. And she explained why she kept coming to church. Because she said, in Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. And so I come to church every Sunday because I know that Jesus is here. Keep coming to church. Keep, keep supporting this church. And I believe God is going to do marvelous things. If you don't know, if you don't have that hope, we're going to have a short invitation. If you don't have the hope of Jesus Christ this morning in your heart, you don't know that when you die that you would be, uh, go to heaven to be with God. I just want to give you that invitation. I want to give you a nudge. And if you're here this morning, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. If you're watching on social media, I want to lead you in a prayer, simple prayer. It just has to come from the heart. It's an intention of your heart. It doesn't really matter the words as long as you accept Jesus as your Savior. Just say this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I now receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me because you love me so much. Thank you for preparing a place for me in heaven. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that simple prayer this morning, you can come forward and let me know you prayed that prayer. If you're on social media, contact the church. The main thing is tell somebody today that you accepted Jesus. Start praying. Start reading a Bible. Find a Bible preaching church and go there. Would you all stand? If God is dealing with you in one way or the other, and you need to make that public this morning, would you come forward? You come forward. Would you be seated for a moment? Hal's going to come up here with some announcements. And you know what? We had a little business meeting scheduled, and we're going to have it, but I'm going to get your attention down there when we're eating, church members, okay? Because I don't want to take the time right now. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful meal down there. I'm going to get your attention. We're going to have a short business meeting between bites, okay? All right. God bless you. So we have a, a video presentation of Brother Ben and Jeannie and their life here at Two Lakes. of God's embrace And I can almost see mercy's face pressed against the veil Looking down with longing eyes 
mercy must have realized that once his blood was sacrificed, freedom would prevail. And as the skies grew dark, the earth began to shake. With justice no longer in the way. Mercy came a running. Like a prisoner set free Passed all my failures To the point of my need And when the sin that I carried Was all I could see And when I could not reach mercy Mercy came a-running to me Once there was a And uh, Brother Ben, I know I'm just going to say this. If we all went around and we said it, we'd be in here until 5 o'clock. But, uh, you know, just thinking personally, and I hope as we, as we go down, guys, I hope you can leave Brother Ben. Uh, and he, like you said, he's going to be around. But leave him with a gift of something from your words, of something that he's done for you. And I just want to say it up here real quick, less than 20 seconds. But you've been my pastor through my mom dying, my grandma, my grandpa, um, the birth of both of my kids, and uh, my marriage. He married us, yeah. So... Um, <laughs> I appreciate the example that you are of um, somebody who's young in life, um, moving into a space of following God no matter what. And um, I appreciate you for how much you care about the Lord and the, just the, the presence that we see. Um, when I look at you, Ben, I see the Lord reflected. 
And um, that's all that you can want, I think, as somebody that's in a church. So I know everybody has their own things that they want to share. And uh, sorry, I'm an emotional bit this week with my grandma, so I'm kind of there. But um, I appreciate you, and thank you for being my pastor and all of our pastors um, and our preachers and our friends and um, everything that there is to you. And I'm just so impressed at, um, at how the Lord has blessed you um, with the ability to do what you do. And uh, I pray that you would share your, your things with Brother Ben, too, um, if you have things in your life. But there's been a lot for me because... I came my first Sunday here 10 plus years ago was a, a kid in college and now I'm a dad and have the career so it's been that part of my life so I appreciate you and I hope you guys can share um, as we go down there um, your, things that Brother Ben has done uh, for you um, as your pastor and as uh, somebody that leads this church so I just wanted to say that publicly to you okay amen amen while I'm doing the announcements, I will, I'll just say that right now. If any of you have something you want to share with Brother Ben in front of all of us, because it's just so the Spirit is talking to you, just mosey on up here, and before we dismiss, I'll hand you the microphone, and you can tell Brother Ben and, or Sister Jeannie whatever it is that the Spirit has put on your heart. We're just so glad that all of you are here, but there are some that just, you just got to have special notice, special mention. Shanna, the King family is here. Y'all stand up for a minute. <laughs> when, when you guys left, Sienna was not taller than you, and Jayla, and Jayla was not as tall. But So it's Tim and Shanna, Sienna, Jordan, Jayla, Joella, and Jensen. You guys, thank you for coming up here today. And then, uh, Amelia, stand up. If you guys have ever gone to Baptist Hospital and needed any kind of breathing treatment, this is your nurse. <laughs> Uh, she's Amelia. She's one of Myers and I, one of our adopted daughters. So we're glad you guys came here as well. Brother Ben, we're going to just take a moment here. If you and Jeannie would just stand up where you are, no, uh, we're just going to clap and yell for you guys like crazy people because we just love you and we want to say thank you. All right, that's enough. We can sit down now. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing you clarified that you want to die thing. I'm glad you clarified that, said, when Jesus comes, because some ideas came across my mind. But I'll just keep them. Uh, anyway, so you guys, let's go through the bulletin real quick. Uh, no service tonight, because we're going to enjoy our fellowship with a meal down there. We're going to be saying hi to everybody as well. Uh, let's see, um, prayer meeting on Wednesday at 6.15. We've got that as well. You see we're still about 18,000 short of our remodeling goal for the kitchen. Uh, let's see, the pastoral search committee members, beginning for the, our new one, is going to be Susan, Linda, Joy, Levi, Stephen, Don, me, with Sandy and Tom as our two alternates. Uh, there's our zinger for the week, live so that if people get to know you, they will get to know Christ better. Something else just occurred to me. This is last week, nope, not last week, the week before and this week, you're telling us all about adventures that you're having at the on queue. So I'm just wondering if there's something that, if you guys are having a boring day, go on down to the on queue. <laughs> this one you were able to minister to and, and, uh, and give them jumper cables and even hug. And the one couple weeks ago, you chased them through the parking lot. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. That's pretty cool. The on queue. That's where it's happening. Uh, church meetings. Hi, let's see. We're doing that today. New evening service. Staff meeting on October 8th, which is next Sunday. The free sale, that's where beginning today, uh, at, I'm sorry, beginning tomorrow, make sure the church office is open or that Arlene is here or somebody with the key to let you in. And beginning tomorrow, you can bring your usable good things that you want to donate, put them straight into the fellowship hall so we don't have to haul them back from the youth. All right, starting tomorrow. And then that's at the end of the month as well. Finance committee in, uh, on the 24th, trunk or treat on the 31st, the Edna McMillan State Mission Offering, we are still uh, a little short of our goal, so remember to pray for about that. That's in addition to your in addition to your tithe. There's the information on Trunk or Treat Night there. Uh, we've got some October birthdays down there, and we'll at the end of the month we'll sing happy birthday to everybody as well. So we got the, the committee thing. We've been doing that for the last couple of months. The, the real bona fide committee list is out now, and if you're like me, you'd be surprised that you're on 11 of them. 
I don't know how that happened, but we're going to see. We're just going to check that out. Um, we got a couple of memory verses we sure like to say. Why is today already a great day? This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And if it's not already a great day for you, why will it become a great day? So I can do same, all- one. <laughs> same one. Oh, same one. Oh. Same one. This is the day it the works, Lord has made. It works for both. Yeah, okay, all right. So what's the big thing about having Jesus? What's the big thing? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You just got to remember to call on him. Remember that he lives inside you. That spirit will prod you. Some, some the Reverend uh, Billy Graham used to say that the spirit would talk to him just like a person in his ear. I'm a little hard-headed than that. I keep getting slapped, so I got to work on that. Uh, that's the obedience kind of thing coming through. Any other announcements before I close this portion in prayer? Did anybody want to come up and say, Brother Ben, you're amazing? Anybody? Uh, Yes, I'm going to say a benediction. Once I'm done with the benediction, let our infirm go on down first, and then the rest of you line that hallway down there, and we're going to give Brother Ben and Jeannie a Roman Roman send-off. Clap them on the shoulder, yell for them as they go on down there. They'll wait for that. So you guys stand. I'll bless the food, and I'll get us out of here. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you do for us each and every day. But on this special day of celebration of Brother Ben and Jeannie stepping into retirement and how they were important to us, how they led us, just as Brother Levi said, Brother Ben has been more than just a preacher. He was a friend and he was a father and he was a guide and he was a disciplinarian at times. Father, we thank you for what they do for us, what they did for us, for all of our staff, for all the people that work here. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will bless the food that we are going to partake, the feast. It is a massive amount of food. May each one of us fill ourselves, fill our bellies, but leave here with our hearts full of joy as well. It is in your holy and great name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then please contact us here uh, at Two Lakes Baptist Church so we can pray for you and so we can uh, maybe send you some information to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And our contact information is on the screen. You can call us, you can write us, uh, you can email us, or if you would like to become a media member or donate to our church, you can go to our website at twolakesbaptist.church and you can find more out uh, information out about our church and uh, we just want to be in contact with you. We want you to know that we care for you and love you. So until next time, may God bless you and keep you and give you peace.